Hello everyone. Tonight we're going to do a little talking about the pedal and the hands and the sound that we want between the two. It's a partnership. The hand can play long notes, the long, long legato type notes. Now the problem, as I've said before, we've talked about this a little bit, is that when I do that, it's very dry sounding. Um, when you add the pedal, you can probably already hear the difference between that and that. There's a full expanse of tone when you use the pedal. So if I had to play a melody, let's take a melody like Somewhere Over the Rainbow, and I play it alone. It's nice. It's a pretty melody. It works well. But if I use the pedal judiciously, and it's, I've made it tonight so you can see the pedal. I hope this works. I've got a light on it and everything else. So I'm going to try to make it so that I make the picture big enough to really see the motion of the pedal down and up. I'm going to play the tune again. This time I'm going to pedal it. I'm going to try not to hold most of the notes with my fingers if I don't have to. Besides freeing my hand up from the keys to get somewhere or to reset or to set for where I'm going, the sound was, was far superior in terms of fullness unless I wanted the emptiness of no pedal. But this partnership, it's kind of like in most cases passing the torch. He hit the key, the pedal was down, and we saw those dampers in one of the earlier episodes of this um, broadcast. So anyway, it's a, it's a partnership. The, the hand, let's, let's put it this way. If I wanted to play I can do it with my hand. If I want it to be perfectly legato, I can't really do it with that hand because I've got to pick the hand up before I play this. But assuming I play them all short, like that, that's what I would like to be able to play. And can my pedal get the exact articulation? Remember that word, articulation. How long notes are, how they connect to each other. Can I affect all that with the pedal? Totally, totally. I wanted long, short, long, short, long. Well, detached, detached, long, okay, or even shorter. No, I think it was longer at the end. Now, there's another thing called half pedaling. Now, I'm not going to get into that tonight, but I will say this, that when, you, when I wanted that last one to taper off, I didn't do that. I didn't go whack with the pedal. You can see my foot, foot coming up quickly there. I'm going to bring it up like this, rather slowly. Listen to the difference. Here it is lifted up quick. Okay, gone. Now I'm going to lift it up a little slower. Here I kind of tapers down a little. Yeah, that's something. Now, not on a digital piano. You're not going to hear that. Maybe on some. They have partial pedaling on some of the more um, recent... Uh, apps and uh, actual pedals where the pedal has more than one position. But on the old damper pedals for, for these uh, digital pianos, it was either on or off. And uh, so you got to be careful of it on those instruments. But on the regular piano, those dampers are going back down into the strings and they don't do it immediately unless you let the pedal go and let it drop like that. So anyway, so if you watch it, I'm looking, trying to find a place in the piano that can see my hand better. I 
Okay? Now, there are times when a note has to get held, and but we want to pedal other notes around it. Let's take a, 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 a gander at one of those. If I play this chord, and there's a G in the chord right here, and I want that G to sound while I go back and forth between, let's say, you can see my foot is going, I'm, I'm doing, I'm lowering those dampers to get rid of that first sound, but I'm tenutoing, the word is tenuto, I'm using a tenuto on the second finger on the G. And you can hear it never goes away. Now, last night, we, the night before, we talked a little bit about Henry Hertz, about these finger um, independence exercises, and a very good example of it right there. I wish you could see it better. I cannot get the, uh, I can't get the camera there so you can see my foot. That's the problem. But perhaps a mirror here tomorrow night or something. Uh, see it? No, that won't sound forever. So I'm using the pedal, but I'm not using the pedal to hold that note. That's done quite often. And where we use pedal, I, one of my son's teacher um, told him once that I like the analogy um, that using pedal was like putting salt on certain things during in, in when you're having dinner or a meal and you somebody puts on a little salt somebody else puts on too much salt they're going to end up with hypertension that's okay but to taste what is it to taste there are some pieces that ask for a lot of pedal that really almost has to be held down that whole time well i'll show you uh, the alternative okay uh, you, we, we lose that sound. You don't want to do that. But again, you don't want to cut that one off too soon before the other one comes in. So tonight I made it so you could see my foot going up and down, playing various things. If I play the Bach, the minuet, which we've talked about. We even did a whole thing on the minuet. So uh, on learning it, how to practice it. Now that's my approach. That's Chef Baker. Somebody else might like it more short, harpsichordy. I like it a little bit. I'm I'm a romantic at heart. Uh, I let it stay down a little bit to, to have that glorious little sound. But some people might find that too um, indulgent. So it's hard to say. Uh, take take the famous Bach prelude in C. Um, actually. Now with just the fingers you can you can sustain these first two notes. It's gonna be hard to do with these three because you keep playing them over and over again, but here for my taste it's just a little too dry. But is there only one way to use the pedal? Now that's holding it through both breakings. Some people would probably only do a pedal for one of them, like so. Watch the pedal. I probably prefer that second one. I think the first one is a little too wet. Let's use that word. Oh, I always use that with students. No, a little too wet. They just keep it down a little too long and it becomes a little, it kind of obscures the music. I think there are phrases in there that I probably hold it for two. Hard to say. Um, whenever I make a video of me playing and I look at it and I go, oh my God, I did that. I didn't know that. Because um, I'm guided by the sound, which you have to be also. You've got to be guided by um, 
what you want to hear, and that requires you know what you want to hear. Um, can I think of any pieces that abuse the pedal? Well, at the beginning of Furelies, which we talked about, as you know, over the last few nights, that would be too much pedal. But there are people that don't believe in any pedal in that. Until there. I don't agree with that. I kind of do a... I can, I can see that happening. See how little the pump is, so very little. Down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. I do a lot of them in there. You can see all of a sudden I'm, I'm on the beat. I don't want too much. Uh, I would rather have none than have too much. But you can, you can sneak it in. Um, so this guy, but I want to get back to the partnership. The hand, when you when you practice pedal, and I've done exercises where I have the kids do pedaling exercises. One of them is where they've got to learn exactly how long that hand has to be on those keys for the pedal to do a complete up down. And you can get pretty surgical with that. That's a piece called uh, in the style of Debussy, which I wrote as a pedal exercise. Sounded like the music of Debussy. Um, and you'll see my hand. The pedal is really surgical. Up down. It's a quick up down. Just enough to get rid of that old chord. Um, the next part of that exercise is you play low G. That you that you tenuto the whole time. So there's a bit, I, the second part of the exercise, I'll post it tonight on pianoat10.com under resources. Um, it's called in the style of Debussy, pedal exercise, damper pedal exercise. The partnership, the partnership, the hands have to know when they're going to be up and when they want him down. And he has to know when it's too much. And what tells you all that is what the sound is that you're looking for. Um... Let's take a look at, I was playing a thing before with the Gershwin Rhapsody in Blue, uh, yeah. Now right there, that's a, that's a, tr tr a tricky part, I would say at first, because you're coming down, and then, then the pedal is coming up, because he's telling him, I'm going to have to hold him. You can't use the pedal here. So up he comes. Up to that point, it was kind of this kind of playing on the pedal. I'll do it again. Now they're up. See when I was going... to be short but I want that note held then the pedal comes back in to grab that chord and when I do that so you can see a lot of pedaling in there ragtime pedaling I, I think I showed that to you once but I, maybe I'll do it again it's just simply a down up I'll go slowly enough so you can, you can hear why again the sound short, long, short. The hands don't have to worry about that. They just play everything short. I do a thing in Rhapsody and Blues, speaking of that piece, which I thought was kind of uh, innovative, I suppose you could say. 
Most people play the hand crossing part. We're going to talk about Soto and Soper maybe tomorrow night, which has to do with over and under. Uh, that goes like this. <laughs> the sound of do 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 up now I'm not gonna get that with my hand it's hard to do that but if I do the pedal I just play this watch the hand is just doing this just doing this like in ragtime got kind of a little mushier a little push it down lift it up push lift push up I'm getting partial pedaling in there along the way it's not cut and dry down up down up that's more ragtime perhaps this one's sort of this pulsating thing down here don't you hear a bunch of people singing do up do up very cool um uh, let's get back to the uh, what I was saying during the um, over the rainbow. We we most often pedal melody. Most people think, oh, there's a chord there. Pedal the chord. Well, they're right. What happens is you get these harmonies. I call them pyramids, um, where you get a G, you get a B, and the, C, the G is still going. You do the D, and the B and the G are still going. And that, that, those are called pyramids, and and they're nice. But when they obscure a melody, then they're not nice. Okay, when they start to obscure what's going on, um, I, I can give you probably umpteen examples of that, but of, 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 I'll just say it in as we hit those types of things. Um, yeah, the beginning of the Balkstein Sonata by Beethoven, interesting point in example. <laughs> Mental lapse there a second. Now, is there any use for pedal? I didn't use any pedal. I used none. I do, rhythmically, we've talked about accent value. I want people to hear groups of four there. So I have a tendency. <laughs> that first beat it's called a staccato pedaling but it does catch the notes for a little bit <laughs> Yeah, the, the pedal in conjunction with the fingers. Who's doing what? Watch this one. Well, let's do this. I pedaled the middle notes. Kept these down. That's the kind of thing people see in a piece and they'll go. And to me, that's just too much pedal. It's not horrendous because it's up high. Do it an octave lower. to be a real mess. See, there you get your cake and eat it too. Get the nice sound, full sound to pedal. You get the sustained notes. They stay. You got the whole thing, but you have to do a little tenuto. And the other fingers, by the way, are, playing, are being played rather short. That's the way I'm playing them. Because of the pedal, you're not hearing that. Partnership, partnership. There are spots where you can use too much. I think I showed you this once, but you know, I threw out a bunch of old videos, so let me just make a point of it. And I think it'll be the last thing I say tonight on this subject. Although tomorrow night, I, I might continue it by looking for some other pieces. I got, I got this thing set up right for this, I think. I'll look later. But um, if, if you if you got a passage like this, okay, 
it's all staccato, it's all double octaves, all very fast. The piano can really be made to growl when you push that pedal down and you can get too many overtones and you can make a real mess of it. But in certain cases, it's actually pretty cool, kind of like a heavy metal moment. You certainly don't want to overdo it. But watch, I'll use a little pedal at the very end. I'll kind of really bear down on that pedal. Okay, you get the idea that that piano starts to just growl because you've got all of it going at once. And it's a horrendously big sound, very sloppy, but in the right place, you know, too much salt. Well, I mean, how many things do we eat that there's too much salt, okay? <laughs> theater popcorn, whatever, whatever it is. And we like it, but you better not be eating it every day, all right? So these kind of things are, 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 uh, uh, are momentarily kind of neat, but anything done too much is, you know, obviously gets tiresome. But, um, oh yeah, there are pianists that do that kind of thing, and uh, the Grieg Piano Concerto. <laughs> sloppy the way I'm playing it, but you get the idea. If you played it without the pedal, it's, you hear the individual notes. You still hear them. And you break it right on that last day. And it gets clean again. Okay? So anyway, I hope that was uh, enlightening. And um, um, pedal, real important. And the partnership is even more important. But the most important thing is knowing the way you want it to sound. Okay, enough for one night. When words fail, music speaks. See you tomorrow.